Scripture reading is First Samuel 15, 22 through 23. Samuel said, Has the Lord as much delight in burnt offerings and sacrifices as in obeying the voice of the Lord? Behold, to obey is better than sacrifice, and to heed than the fat of rams. For rebellion is as the sin of divination, and insubordination is as iniquity and idolatry. Because you have rejected the word of the Lord, He has also rejected you from being king. Amen. After Golden Light Choir's praise, Pastor m i k y u n g Lee will preach the message entitled, Obedience Session 2. In the first session, I explained about four different kinds of obedience. First is to obey by force with reluctance. Second is to obey with only when you think you have the physical ability or capability. The third type of obedience is unconditional obedience. The fourth type is to obey willingly, understand, uh, understanding God's intention in giving the command. Only when you obey God's word, understanding His heart, will, and thought, it can be true obedience. After you listen to the last sermon, in order to live a life of obedience, how much do you obey each other between family members, between friends in your life? How can you obey the word of the invisible God if you don't obey what is visible and easy for others? Today, as the second session of the Sermon Obedience, I'll tell you the way to achieve the obedience God desires. What do you have to do in order to obey as God wants you to? First of all, we must not have our ego or self. Self is what you make of yourself as you grow up. The environment, thoughts, and knowledge were made based on your own standard, and each person has a different standard. And the level of obedience differs depending on how you have made yourself. Those who have self-righteousness were not able to accurately understand the heart and the will of God. Even if they practice the truth, they won't be able to realize the love of God contained in it, and the truth will not change themselves but become a standard for measuring others. God commanded Jonah in Jonah 1-2, Arise, go to Nineveh, to the great city, and cry against it, for their wickedness has come up before me. Because the wickedness of the people of Nineveh have come up before God, God said to cry out that God would destroy the city of Nineveh. But Jonah flees to Tarsus. Tarsus. He's running away to disobey the word of God. Jonah did not put God's will first, but his own emotion was his priority. He wanted the city of Nineveh, who had given a hard time to his country, to be destroyed. But the reason why God said He would destroy the city is not because He truly wanted to destroy it. He wanted to give the last chance to its people. Jonah knew that, uh, knew, uh, that, it, that uh, his, if he conveyed God's will to the people of Nineveh, they would repent and God's wrath would stop. Although Jonah knew God's heart and will, he didn't first obey his will, but his evil feeling was more important. Because he hated them, he wanted them to be destroyed. So, he left the will of God and fled to Tarshish after all. In this way, even if you know God's will very well, you will inevitably disobey as much as you have ego or self. 
In order to enlighten Jonah about God's love, God let a plant grow over his head to rest in his in its shade, and then took away took it away. When Jonah suffered from the scorching sun again, rejected God. When it became hot again, he begged to rather kill him. Jonah valued even a plant like that much. So God enlightened him about the greater love of saving souls, but he didn't try to understand it. God tells us not to murder and that even hating others in the heart is murder. But because he put his hating feeling first, he came to disobey. Even in the order, you cannot obey because you put your own opinion and will ahead. Of course, those who do not obey think that it will go well if they follow their own opinion because they think it's better than others' opinion, rather than thinking that they are, uh, they are disobeying. If their opinion actually worked well, they are more proud of saying, Do you see? I'm right. And speak louder next time. In this case, to follow the word to make peace, others are following the opinion uh, of those who speak loudly. But these people cannot realize that fact. In order not to have ego in you, but to have God alone in you, you should deny yourself and your flesh should die every day. If you want to die to self, obedience is not something difficult, but it's not easy to obey as long as you have self. Then, what kind of characteristic of ego hinders you from being subject to Christ completely? It's the fleshly thoughts. Those who realize the love of God try to resemble God's heart by willingly obeying His word. However, the heart is willing, but there is the fleshly thought which hinders you from fully obeying the truth. As Romans 8.5 says, For those who are according to the flesh set their minds on the things of the flesh, but those who are according to the Spirit, the things of the Spirit, it makes you think of the works of the flesh. For example, if, you, if someone does something you hate, first of all, you think you hate it. And furthermore, the fleshly work of hatred arise, arises. As it says that the mindset of the flesh is death, if you hate and envy of others, you are pursuing the desire of the enemy devil, which is the opposite to God's will. Having the mindset on the flesh is also death. On the contrary, the mindset on the spirit is life and peace. As it says that those who are according to the Spirit and set their minds on the things of the Spirit, those who are pursuing the Spirit will first think of the word, love your enemies. Because it is delivered, uh, it is, uh, del delivered from the heart thought, um, you will remember the word to love and act to try to love. Mommy members, sheep of our shepherd, are you pursuing the spirit and having spiritual thoughts? As the Lord says, I am the way, the truth, and the life. Those who pursue the spirit is life and um, have life and peace. If you pursue the desire of the flesh, you will feel conflicted and uneasy. Those who believe in the Lord enjoy overflowing joy and peace. As it says in 1 Thessalonians 5, 16 through 18, Rejoice always, pray without ceasing, in everything give thanks, for this is God's will for you in Christ Jesus. It's because this word abides in them. Because they follow the desire of the Spirit, the will of God, the Holy Spirit rejoices, and God also delights with it. However, it says that the mindset on the flesh is hostile toward the God. Let's say someone next to you suddenly hits you on the cheek, then oh, what do you think? Why, why do you hit me? What, what, did, it, what did I do wrong? 
He will burst into anger and try to hit him back. You will have the fleshly thought that you will pay back the same as you got hit unfairly. If you can't control that thought, you will act it, right? That is, it will come out as the deed of the flesh. Before you actually hit, it, hit him, you will have the work of the flesh first, thinking, why am I hit unfairly? So, you won't have peace in heart, but your heart will suffer. However, the word of God, the truth, is the opposite. If you pursue the spirit of truth, how does the Holy Spirit manage your heart if someone hits you? Of course, you will wonder, why did he hit me? But it's not from evil feelings, but you will wonder, what have I done wrong to him? And look back upon yourself first. Furthermore, the Holy Spirit will help you remember the word whoever hits you on the cheek, offer him the other also. If you pursue the Spirit, you will follow the Holy Spirit's guidance, and you will act with the heart of yielding, sacrifice, love, and humbleness. So, you will, you will be able to make peace with, uh, even with enemies. The mindset on the flesh is hostile towards God, and those who have fleshly thoughts don't be subject to God's law, and they can't even do so. As much as you have fleshly thoughts, you cannot obey God's word. Therefore, in order to be subject to the Christ, you should completely demolish the fleshly thoughts by the word of truth. Only when you demolish these fleshly thoughts, you can receive faith from above, and you can do anything, as it says, if you can't. If you can, all things are possible to him who believes. You say that uh, you pray, you pray, keep the Lord's Day, giving offerings, and evangelize. But because of this fleshly thought, you disobey in so many matters. As it says in Psalms 37, 4, Delight yourself in the Lord, and He will give you the desires of your heart. We should please God. However, you cannot please Him, then how can you ful fulfill your heart's desires? Those who have fleshly thoughts cannot bear the fruit of fruit God wants. Even if they say, you're, uh, they say they're trying hard themselves. So, as much as uh, you demolish your fleshly thoughts, your ego will disappear, and only truth will remain. Next, what is the characteristic of ego? It's reasons and excuses. Even among unbelievers, some of them see things positively in the same environment, and some others see things extremely negatively on the contrary. Depending on how they made themselves while growing up, different conclusions can be made. People with many reasons and excuses always blame the environment uh, in a given situation. If they have a hard time because they steal charity for friends, they blame on their friends. They blame their friends. They blame uh, their boss and uh, they uh, blame uh, their environments. Then, is everything others' fault? Is it others' fault that you are slow to change in the truth too? Even if some words uh, are given to enlighten them, they do not try to correct it by keeping in mind, but they often give many reasons and excuses saying it is not the case. They are giving reasons and excuses asking to understand their situation because they can't obey even though they want it. Well, there is a the difference between those who success and those who don't. People with success try to, um, well, a uh, very uh, famous person who cook, um, 
very well. He uh, tried. He tries to teach other people uh, so that they can uh, uh, make their business a success. But people with success uh, try to throw away their own things without any reasons or excuses and accept better things. But people without success always give reasons and excuses. They obey if they are um, rebuked by, uh, because they couldn't uh, make their uh, place clean. They give reasons and excuses about that. They obey when it is beneficial to them, and they don't obey when it's not. So they change their mind and go back to the old habits and ways that they may they had made before, no matter how good direction they are guided to. How about our shepherd? whom you've been seeing for 40 years. No matter what God commands to him, he doesn't use any thoughts or theories. What God has commanded him until now was not something possible by man's ability or the wisdom and limit of the flesh. There have been so many things impossible to be done in reality. However, he didn't think of the reality at any matters, but unconditionally obeyed. He never thought if it was something he could do. If it's God's word, he just obeyed. By such obedience, God's kingdom was expanded and He fulfilled the world evangelism. One time, God commanded him to look at the sky. God said, God said to him to see how the heavenly door was opened and to check the direction of the wind while watching the move, movement of clouds. He obeyed and saw the sky for a week. For some days, the heavenly door was opened, but some other days, it wasn't open. What would you think if you are said to look at the sky in the hot summer? In particular, women would first think, what if my face got burned? I shouldn't have any freckles on my face. Wouldn't you put sunscreen on your face and wear a hat before you look at the sky? However, our shepherd looked at the sky with his bare face, saying that he felt embarrassed to look at the sky with a hat on. When he saw the sky was open, but when it didn't open, he wondered if his sincerity was insufficient and put more heart in it. Because senior pastor has failed the justice by this kind of obedience to God's word for many years, at every event of the church, God set the temperature, temperature most ideally to 24 degrees Celsius. God made the cool wind to blow and cover the hot sun with clouds so that we could hold a summer retreat with the fine, fine weather without worrying about getting burned um, under the scorching sun. Mamin has always received God's protection, just as the Israelites who left Egypt were protected with a pillar of cloud by day and a pillar of fire by night. And God always made us see rainbows in the sky. From last Wednesday until this week, God showed a circular rainbow every day to guarantee that God is always with us, Mamin. Our shepherd didn't obey only to God, but he always obeyed even a little one. As he did so, I pray that you resemble the shepherd and completely obey without your ego. In order to obey as God wants you to, second, you must not have selfish motives and you should walk the path of righteousness. If you have selfish motives, you cannot walk the right way. And finally, you cannot obey. 
Selfish motive is an uh, evil thought and idea. It's uh, what Satan can control. When Satan controls it, people with selfish motives follow its way. If you have selfish motives, you cannot walk the right path, and there will be unrighteousness. Selfish motive is uh, the desire to fulfill your personal greed. Let's say there's a way to earn great money. God tells you to go to the East, but you think you can earn great amount of money if you go to the West. Then, which direction will you choose? If you are a man of God, and no matter how huge amount of money you can get, you should not choose to go that way if it is against the will of God. You should not have any regret, and you should have nothing to do with it. For seeing a pastor's faith who was so from the beginning of his life of faith, he had a lot of debts because of 70 or long diseases. After he was healed by God, he was given a chance to make money in a good condition. However, he had to violate the Lord's Day twice a month to do that job. He didn't even consider doing it. He put the will of God first and acted so. He didn't think like, oh, since I have a lot of debts, it may be a chance to pay it back. It must be God's blessing. Just because it's against the word of God to keep the Lord's Day holy, he didn't consider it without regret. If he had had any greed for money, he could have abandoned God's will in that situation. At this time, he didn't have great faith. Nevertheless, he completely obeyed and acted as much as he understood the will of God. Selfish motive is to seek one's own benefit, trying to get more for oneself and to be acknowledged and loved by others. To the extent that you have selfish motives, you will walk away from the way of God. It's just as says in James 1.15, then when lust is conceived, it gives birth to sin, and when sin is accomplished, it brings forth death. If you have selfish motives, you cannot get rid of greed and lust. It will give birth to sin, and moreover, you, will, uh, you may leave God. Furthermore, sin is accomplished. It brings forth death, as it says. Since you choose what's beneficial to you following your greed and selfish motives, you change any time according to the situations. You obey if it is beneficial to you, but you don't obey if it's not. However, the true obedience is not asking about conditions. You won't use your own thoughts according to situations, and you won't give any excuses or reasons. You will think of the will of God alone, and in any situation, you will say yes and amen. There is a rich young man in Matthew chapter 19. He came to Jesus and said, What good thing should I do that I may obtain eternal life? But then he said to him to keep the commandments. Then he said, I kept this, uh, all the commandments. Then Jesus said, if you wish to com be complete, go and sell your possessions and give to the poor, and you will, ha you will have a treasure in heaven, and come, follow me. Then the young man went away grieving, for he was one who owned much property. He didn't obey with yes and amen, but he went away grieving. Even though he came before Jesus with a good heart, from the beginning he had a heart to obey only to the limit of what he could do. So when the situation crosses the limit, he ends up pursuing his own benefit. Likewise, if you have selfish motives, you cannot truly obey. Those who don't have selfish motives obey in small matters also, in a fleshly order. There are what we must do, uh, 
living in this world. Let me give you the example of tax. Suppose you have to pay 30% income tax by the law of the country, then it is to walk the right way to obey it. You shouldn't think it is wasteful to pay all 30%, but it is something natural and obedient, uh, obvious. If it is decided by the law of the country, there is nothing difficult if you do it, thinking that it's a duty to do as a citizen, not regretting it. If you started a business, you should be able to pay taxes properly to the country. If you try to evade taxes due to your greed, you will walk away from the right path. Although it is a small amount of, uh, at first, you are doing it with the mind that you will evade a great amount of back tax. You may have more profit for the moment, but it will become your snare to lead you to a trial because you violated the law from selfish motives. In the end, many of such people have to pay the penalty, which is much more than the amount of tax invaded, evaded. You should remember that walking the right path is a solid path to success in all other fields. Those who always keep in mind and obey the words given through our shepherd must be walking the right path and receiving blessings. First, Timothy 6.10 says, For the love of money is the root of all sorts of evil, and some by lo uh, longing for it have wandered away from the faith and pierced themselves with many griefs. When you have this kind of greed and selfish motives, if you are blessed, your greed and selfish motives will increase, and you will make God sad through bigger sins, and after all, you will go the way of death. Romans 13 a says, Owe nothing to anyone except to love one another, for he who loves his neighbor has fulfilled the law. Since the opening of Mammy Church and until now, our shepherd has been hindering us from trading money between believers. He said not to owe anything except to love one another. However, sometimes the believers break peace with each other by money trading. Because they were told not to do it, they don't inform the church but trade money according to their own benefit. And only after they can't receive the money back, they inform the church that they traded the money. They don't inform the church with a heart of repentance, saying, I have violated, violated the word, but they ask their pastor to persuade, persuade the other to pay back the money. If you violated the word for your own benefit, you should repent and try to keep the word again. You should obey the word of God, saying to owe nothing to anyone except love. Some people forsake the word and stand surety, and as a result, they encounter difficulties, and their family suffer difficulties. Some walk away from the righteous way due to their desire for fame. For example, we elect the leaders of mission groups considering the qualifications of leaders that God has taught us. But if you distribute some presence, uh, presents or money because you want to be a leader so much, this is also disobedience. This is what the worldly people do. Because of the selfish desire for fame, you walk away from the right path. If this kind of a person is elected, that person and the particular group or the mission will suffer. It's because you have given the chance for Satan to test you. When church leaders are doing something for God's kingdom, they should not let their selfish desire to be motivated. Some have excessive desire to bear much fruit and utilize human methods, then they may walk away from the right path. If they do so, they might hurt others' feelings or break peace between people. The reason why you break peace with others is that you don't receive guidance and inspiration of the Holy Spirit, but do the works with human thoughts. It means you are going ahead of God.
then you cannot bear the kind of fruit that God desires. Thus, the leaders should realize that to walk uh, the right way, they uh, should cast away all their frameworks and self-righteousness to follow the guidance of the Holy Spirit. Only then will they be able to obey the will of God completely. The enemy devil and Satan also know the heart and mind of people. I mean, fleshly people. They know how to tempt people and how to make the people stand against God and use them as their instruments. As long as you have selfish motives and greed and don't walk the right path, then the enemy devil and Satan will make you its prey and you cannot fully obey the word. So I hope you cast them off completely and receive abundant blessings given by God. In order to obey as God wants you to, thirdly, you should have the fruit of spiritual love. All those who love God would want to obey God. It's natural. But when we see the result of the situations, sometimes they have disobeyed. As I said earlier, it's because they have their self or ego in them. It means when they do a certain work, they use their own thoughts, wisdom, and methods. They insist on what they think is right. Now, they listen to so many sermons and they know that they have to destroy their ego and self and their self-centered righteousness. But why do they re not realize themselves? Some people are slow to discover themselves and change, although they serve and work hard for the church. It is because they are too um, too. Uh, they are so insufficient of spiritual love that needs a sacrifice. Even in this world, the mother sacrifices her life to save her children who is in danger. They even jump into the flames or into the water to save their child. How can they do that? It's because they love their child. Likewise, neither water nor fire would matter to spiritual love. We will be able to just sacrifice our lives. When Jesus was hung on the cross, his disciples were scared and ran away. But the women, including Mary Magdalene, stayed with him until the end because they loved him so much. This is truly spiritual love. You will not fear of any dangerous situations. Just as parents can give even their, their lives for children, if you love God and the Lord, you should fulfill the spiritual love that you can give yourself willingly. God desires of you the obedience that comes out from the spiritual love. We cannot, we cannot give faith without love, and without love, we cannot have hope to do the will of God. Jesus loved God so much, and so He believed the Father and hoped for the glorious days during which uh, he would enjoy the heavenly kingdom with the Father. That's why he could do, go the way of the cross willingly. Our fathers of faith, fathers of faith also loved God with their life. The Apostle Paul of faith has such great love for the Lord that he said in Romans 8, 35 through 39, just as it is written, for your sake you were being put to death all day long. We were considered as sheep to be slaughtered. But in all these things we overwhelmingly conquer through him who loved us. For I am convinced that neither death nor life nor angels nor principalities um, nor things present nor things to come nor powers nor height nor depth nor any other created thing will be able to separate us from the love of God which is in Christ Jesus our Lord. Only when we have this spiritual love followed by sacrifice, we can have strength to get rid of ego, selfish motives, and greed easily.
True obedience stems from the deep spiritual love. Abraham loved God more than his only son Isaac's life, so he could obey perfectly knowing God's will. Apostle Paul also loved God more than his own life, so he didn't spare his life but served God with all his life, and he perfectly obeyed even by throwing away his physical good environment. Also, our shepherd has been obeying unchangingly until now with the love and grace of God who saved his life and healed him when he was waiting for death after seven years of long sickness. That way of obedience was ridiculed and criticized many, by many people, and many times it was the path of death. Nevertheless, he's going that way willingly because he understands the heart and will of God that wants to save the souls, and because he loves so much the Lord who went the way of the cross boldly. In this way, if you love God first beyond what you think is more precious, you can fulfill perfect obedience with that love. I hope that you can obey any word by loving God, the Lord, and the Shepherd completely. Let me conclude the message. In order to obey as God wants you to, first of all, we must not have our ego or self. Second, you must not have selfish motives and you should walk the right path. Thirdly, you should have the fruit of spiritual love. In today's reading passage, Samuel said, Has the Lord as much delight in burnt offerings and sacrifice as in obeying the voice of the Lord? Behold, to obey is better than sacrifice, and to heed than the fat of rams. That is, God delights in your obedience. When you obey with Amen unconditionally without using your own thoughts, you can be used for God's kingdom and glorify Him. I pray in the name of the Lord that you will be used completely by the Lord by fulfilling the perfect obedience. Let's pray thinking over the message.